I recently created a product video for a client that wanted the Apple aesthetic. In other words, a white background and a clean look. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how I managed to achieve that look by talking about my recording setup for that video and a little bit about the editing. The setup is simple and I'll be linking every piece of equipment necessary down below. Let's start off with the items needed for the white background. So the background itself is an Emart foldable white and black backdrop for photography that I bought off Amazon. After you unfold the backdrop, you want to attach it to a photography rig. From there, you'll see that there are some slight wrinkles on it, but don't worry because once we shine bright lights on it, it won't be seen by the camera. I will admit though, I am a little OCD. So what I did was use a steamer to basically remove the wrinkles. The next item we need is the white tablecloth. I used an iron to steam this white tablecloth to remove the wrinkles. But again, if there's enough light, I feel like the wrinkles won't be an issue. After placing the white tablecloth on the table, I moved the table as close to the white backdrop as possible. I tested different distances with the table and white backdrop and found that this was the best image in my opinion. From there, we need to add the lights. I personally used four different lights, although they might not all be necessary. I had a light on the left side and right side shining onto the white backdrop, and then I had an extra light coming on from the top right, shining on the backdrop again as a backlight. The final light was the key light for the product. This one was the aperture light, while the two in the back were the LED newer lights and the backlight was the Godox one. Again, links below. Lighting was a bit difficult to figure out at first, but I found that each of these lights helped me produce the image that I wanted. Without the key light, the backlights seemed a bit too overpowering. Without the backlights, you start to see the wrinkles. In terms of how strong each light was, I based that on the preview on my camera. As long as I could see the product clearly and the white background wasn't clipping, then it was good. So make sure to turn on your zebras. So for me, that was about 65% on the aperture light with the softbox diffuser on it, 100% for the LED newer lights, and about 6% for the Godox backlight because there was no diffuser on it. So I used the Sony a7 IV and a macro lens, which was the 90 millimeter f2.8 to record the entire video. Honestly, this macro lens is one of my favorites and it helps with the close-ups for the product since it has a very small focusing distance, meaning it can capture extreme detail. I shot mostly everything in 24 FPS and used S-Log3. More on that later. There's really not much else to say. I mounted the camera on the Manfrotto fluid head tripod and shot the microscope with different angles that came to mind. It did help that the microscope was generally pretty small overall and symmetrical, so I didn't need to worry about shooting it on every side all the time. There was a storyboard to work off of to show its features, so that was the main focus. But however, one thing to note is that I had to record with a shutter speed of one over 40 instead of one over 50 because the microscope had a screen that would flicker sometimes. Okay, so after recording everything, I brought it all into Premiere Pro. Color correction is necessary since we shot in S-Log3. I used something called Phantom LUTs, which I'll link down below for the main correction. And then I just adjusted anything I needed to make it look the way I wanted. The main parameters that I focused on were the generic ones, the highlights, shadows, whites, and blacks. I wanted to make sure that the product didn't look so washed out, so I darkened some of the shadows and blacks. But other than that, it looked pretty good right after applying the light. From there, it was just about finding the best shot and cutting it together. In terms of text, I used what the client wanted and just applied some slight movement and fade in to it. And that's pretty much it on the editing side that was like slightly different. Most of what went into achieving the look was in the setup section. Honestly, before I even took on this project, I had no idea how to achieve that Apple-esque white background and clean look. I just did my best with experimenting with what I had and it turned out pretty good. So hopefully this video can help some of you guys out there who are trying to achieve that white background clean look. And if it did, it would be awesome if you subscribed and gave the video a like. Anyways, have a great day and I hope to see you guys in the next video.